I am giving to you the message. The title is You Have Found the Truth. It's an information actually. You have found the truth. Everybody say, I have found the truth. Say it again. Exactly. I, that's what God wants me to tell you. You have found it. You shall be, I shall be found of you, saith the Lord. That's what he said. Look at it in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 29, verse 13. He says, and ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. In verse 14. And I will be found of you. The Lord here is speaking to you. Remember, I'm talking to you as an individual. The Lord is saying, because you sought him, you found him. Finding God is not by feeling, it's by faith. For the just shall live by faith. Your, your spirit is in connection with God now. Because you sought for Him. You looked for Him. You have found Him. So He's giving you an information. You have found Him. You will grow in the knowledge of God. Now you have begun. That's what He's saying. You have begun. So don't be allowing doubting anymore. Yeah, don't, be, don't be using feeling. Use faith. Believe. You have found it. Now, in the book of Matthew, we're taking our text from Matthew 13. Let me read verse 44 to verse 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like on unto treasure hid in a field the which whom a man had found he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had and buyeth that field again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it now this is giving you the message you are a merchant man a businessman looking for treasure looking for good repair now this man that is looking for treasure from place to place, from year to year, eventually found one in a field. He found one in a field. And for the joy of finding one, he went and sold all he had and bought that field because of that treasure wonderful wonderful of course it's in a peel of great price that the, the merchant man found and sold all that he had and bought it let's come to this treasure Fear I and mean, hit in the field that you have found that will make your day that will make your life worthy upon the earth that will make your life peaceful that will satisfy you throughout your existence on earth a treasure hid in a field. That is 
this fear that has this treasure hid in it, it is the field of Christianity. It is the field of God's kingdom on earth. You have entered into this field and you discover this treasure. Heat underneath the field. Well, let me say this. A brother was telling me that he saw gold somewhere. I asked him, how do you see the gold? How do you, how, what makes you to, to know that gold is inside the field? He said, these precious stones have their informants. They have their messengers that inform people where they are. He said, when you go to that field, you will find some certain stones on top of the field. You will find a stone pointing to a direction naturally. If you are used to this treasure, when you see that stone, you will see the type of tra the type of precious stone under that ground. So they went somewhere in the field and saw that precious thing, that stone, that messenger on top of the soil and they saw that it was announcing that the king was in that place. Gold was inside that place. It's a mystery of creation. He said, as you keep on digging, the direction of the gold will continually be shown you until you arrive there. It's a most mysterious thing. It's in creation. That's how they fall. Now, you came to the field of Christianity. General Christian religion. There is this messenger stone that is on top there and is pointing to where the truth is. It's pointing. I am not the truth. But I'm pointing to you where the truth is. That you begin to dig and the direction is still following. Going is saying, although you are in the field, you have not found Jesus yet. You will find Jesus as you. We're announcing that Jesus is here, inside the field. Keep on digging down. Keep on digging down. We will keep on pointing to you that you are on your way but have not arrived. And when you arrive, you will see the king. How many of you have seen the king? You have been in Christianity all this while, but the spirit of God began to point to the direction of Jesus. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Until when you came to where Jesus was, he said, I have found him. You just knew this is Jesus. You just got satisfied. You see how costly gold is? It changes your life. Therefore, you go and sell all to dig that ground. You go and sell all to hire the machines required to get to the to the depth where the gold is. So it will cost you repentance. It will cost you giving up all. It will cost, in fact, sometimes your marriage has to be affected because you're married wrongly. You're married wrongly. It's not your first wife. You were duly married to your first wife, but some uh, family sickness came, marital sickness came, and you didn't treat it. And that you separated from her. And now you're into another wife. And you can't find Jesus with that. So you have to do restitution. 
to face that matter. Resolve to go back to your first wife. You are living in a nation where divorce is normal. He said, out of killing marriages, two is like two are divorced people living together. Out of killing marriages in America, two are divorced that are still living together. So the, the original partner is gone. Now, to find the, the Lord Jesus, you have to remove the strange woman and go back to your original wife. You have to leave the second man and go back to your original husband or else stay all married. That's the doctrine of truth. And all Christians must come to this. That's where the unity of the faith is. So, that is it. Restitution. Restoring what you have re giving back what you have stolen. Making peace with people. Now, you can't find Jesus when you are in animosity with people. When you cannot speak with your brother. You cannot speak with your sister. No, you can't find you have not found him. You have not. There's anger in you, there's bitterness in you, there's pride in you, there is selfishness in you. You have not found him. You have not. Because there are things you have to do. They make follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. You have come into the field, but you have not got to where the gold is. There is the messenger that is telling you, keep on going, keep on going, settle this, settle this. It's costly. As you're digging in, breaking through rocks, to arrive at how high the gold is. So, settle this one, settle this one. You told that lie before, and you're living in the lie. Your eyes cannot see the king. Your eyes cannot see the king. Remember you told your husband that you were a virgin. But that was a lie. Go back and recover it. That is, that is 25 years ago. But you need to do that to see Jesus. Because you see Jesus in your heart. It's by faith. But something has blocked that heart. It must be removed. It must be removed. So, these are the things. There are things you need to do. Positive things you need to do. You have to come to reading the Bible. It will give you the direction of Jesus. You have come to you have to come to learn how to pray. It will make you learn how to speak with Jesus. And so on and so forth. You have to do clean business. Clean business to give you to, to give you access to the presence of the Holy God. Yes. You must remove charm, witchcraft, enchantment, occultism. You must get them removed from your life. To, to make you have access to the true power because those are fake power and the power of Jesus repel them. If you have them, a force will from where the Lord is will be pushing you backwards, will pushing you backwards. You can't go to him because you're carrying strange power. You're carrying strange spirit in your life. So you can see you have come to the fear but you have to sell all. You have come to the field to mine the gold and the messenger is on top of the soil pointing to where the king is but it will cost to break through to arrive at where the king is. It takes, it takes a distance of eating and you must make the money available. It takes effort to arrive at Jesus and you must make the consecration available. You must make the repentance available to be able to get Jesus. To be able to get Jesus. You arrive at where the gold is, but the effort to arrive at the gold, to break through and dig through to the gold, is where you don't have the money. Now, the brother who told me this said, the people who discover this field and show the gold are ready to sell it. Because I think that's what the one said. If anybody can buy, uh -huh, 
buy from the, the field. You can preach Jesus to others because you, you cannot have them since you can't return. You don't want to return. You sell the field, you don't have the cost. You, have to, you don't have the power. You don't have the money to dig through. What do you do? Sell the field. So many people are in Christianity in the field where Jesus is, but the only preaching. They don't have them because they cannot repent. They refuse to repent. They refuse to undertake the projects of repentance. They cannot, they refuse to do the restitution. But they talk about Jesus to others. They sing about Jesus to others. They evangelize Jesus to others. It's like the man that saw the field, where the God is, but last the man. Last the man. Thank God I'm talking to people that Jesus wants me to let them know they have found him. <laughs> what a good news. You have found him. Rejoice. The Lord says you have found him. Your hungry heart has received the food. Your thirsty heart has got the cup of cool water. You will drink and be satisfied. That is what I'm saying. Now, the truth. The first thing I will present of what you have found is actually Jesus. Then there are other components of truth which came from Jesus, which also you have found to make life wonderful, to make Jesus real, to get the treasures that are in Jesus. So, I will tell you, you have found the first person, the most important person is Jesus. Then, I should also inform him that you have also found the true man of God that will always make Jesus clear, sweet, understandable, fine, nice, and joyful. And then the third person, the third thing I should also let you know, you have found the true message of the scripture. The sound doctrines of eternal life. You see the wonderful things you have found. Number one, Jesus himself. Number two, the man of God of truth that will reveal Jesus to you and keep you in Jesus Christ. And then number three, the scripture of truth. The doctrines of righteousness that will keep you, keep your feet in the truth that will eventually land you in heaven. So, now we go to him that has been found. He took himself because you have found the truth. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the lie. Can you see? Jesus is the truth. And you have found the truth. You have found Jesus, the truth. That is what you have found. And that is treasure hid in a field in the world. That is what will make life full, complete, and eternal. Jesus, that is He. That is He. You are looking for treasure. You found it in a person. Treasure is in a person. And that person is Jesus. You have found Him. I have found him. 
and we are happy, joyful. Come and see the way we praise God today because we found Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that gives joy. It gives satisfaction. He said, I am the truth. That's the truth that you found. No other place. No other thing. Many people found money, but that was life. Life's treasure is not in money. Many people found a wife, but life's treasure is not in the wine. Many found a husband, but life's treasure is not in the husband. Oh, you found a job. Life's treasure is not in the job. You find a good man. Life's treasure is not in a natural good man. It is in Jesus. It is when you find Jesus. Because he is the truth. Again, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 21. If so be that ye have had him and have, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Thank God. You are not in Islamic religion. That is not the truth. Thank God you are not a Buddhist. That is not the truth. Thank God you are not practicing green message. That is not the truth. No, it is not. Thank God you are not a Hindu. You are not following Hindu. That is not the truth. You found the truth about life that makes life life eternally, and that is Jesus. It's Jesus. That is the truth about life. You found him. Wonderful. I say you're wonderful. Angels will associate with you. Angels will take care of you. The whole creation will bless your life because you have found the truth. You have discovered the truth. Wonderful. Yeah. The truth is in Jesus. Yeah. In John chapter 6, verse 14. John chapter 6, verse 14. The Bible tells us here saying, Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that shall come into the world. This is of a truth, that prophet that the Lord has sent to the world. No other religion, no other prophet, no other man, no other wise man, no other science, no other, no other, no other. This is of a truth that life that has come into the world that he might that he that believeth shall have. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is that person that whosoever believes on him will not perish anymore. Ah. Jesus said to that woman of Samaria, If thou knowest the gift of God, and he to whom the, that he to whom uh, and he who has said unto you. Give me to drink. You would have asked of him. And he would have given you rivers of living water. Hey. Ah! You have found life. Rivers of living water. Be satisfaction in this life. Because the discovered the truth about life is Jesus. 
that is in you. To be born again. To acknowledge Jesus your Savior. To accept Jesus to be your Lord is the greatest achievement in life. Many professors of learning died without him and perished forever in hell. Many presidents of the world died without him and are seeing the fires of hell and that is forever. Many wealthy men on earth die without him. Outside him life is vanity. Vanity of all vanity. See the picture. All things are vanity. It's a vexation of spirit. It's a labor God has given unto man to labor uh, in all the days of his vanity. But there is one. If you found, you have found treasure of great price. You have found treasure and that is Jesus. Shout the name. Let the world hear you have found him. Let everybody hear that you have found him. Let everybody know that you have found him. Call the name of Jesus. Because he's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Mighty God, the Micah. Hallelujah. The Savior of the world. He is eternal life. Glory to his name forever. We have found him. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> ah, I'm blessed in life that I found the king of life, the treasure of life. I live forever. <laughs> I raise up my hand with him and say, I live forever. <laughs> What a treasure. Who, who helped me to find Jesus? That's a blessed man. May the Lord remember that man. May the Lord remember that woman. Who is this? How did I? Let the glory go to the Almighty God. I don't know how my feet were directed to discover God. Treasure. Hey. Thank God your feet have been directed here. You have found him. That is it. That is it. These people found Jesus. These people found Jesus. They were glad. They were glad that they found him. This is of a truth, the Messiah. This is of a truth, the one that is to give a new life to every man that cometh upon the earth. This is the true light that shineth upon everyone that enters into the earth. Jesus. Jesus is the precious name I know. He's always just the same. Oh, precious holy name. That is the reason why I love him so. I love him so much. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Do you love the Lord? Sweetest name I know. Thank you, my people. Oh, that's it's a great thing. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I put in I, I John know. chapter 18, verse 37. John 18, verse 37. Pilate, therefore, said unto him, Art thou a king? Then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. You have well said that I am a king. To this end was I, bow, was I born. And for this cause.
world came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Where are those people that are of the truth? You have found the truth. You have found the truth. You are hearing the voice of the truth. You are hearing the voice of the truth. What I'm talking about is of the truth. The person I'm announcing is the truth. I preach his voice. I cut his voice. The voice of the truth. He is my king. He is my king. He said he was born for this purpose to be king over those people. He is born for this purpose to be a king. All the people that love the truth. All the people that will come to him. That is why he came to the world. It's a bad thing that you're outside the kingdom. The bad thing. That's the worst of life. Not to be with Jesus inside. And you're outside. Unfortunate of you. It's raining outside. It's terrible outside. It's very cool and chilly. It's drying the bones. Outside, you have not entered inside. Get in. In the book of John chapter 1, verse 2 to verse 9. Oh, sorry. Verse 29 to 46. John chapter 1, verse 29 to 46, 46, it goes. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Do you know where the things are special? Do you know those who have found him, the sin of their lives have been taken away. Huh. I was in the airport yesterday and I saw all this nakedness of the women going about. I said, God, and I don't have lust over this woman. I don't have any feeling as if, hey, look at their nakedness neighbor. I said, how did this thing happen? Salvation of Jesus. Hi. Wonderful. This is wonderful. This is salvation. Not a, I look into my heart. No sin it was there. No envy, no jealousy, no wickedness, no malice. And so how did this happen? Salvation of Jesus. I say it's a wonderful thing, a treasure to find someone that will take away iniquity from your life. Take away the power of sin from you and make you free. You begin to live your life as an angel upon the earth. Treasure of great price is costly. Yes, treasure, a hit treasure. Wonderful. By him, sin will not be in your life. Sin will not be in your life. Your eyes will be clean. Your mind will be clean. Your imagination will be pure. You found him. You found him. Jesus says some of you have found him. I should tell you. You have found the truth. Yes. This is who is he of whom I say, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. He has been living before me. His dwelling is of all from everlasting. His dwelling is of all. Every person on earth was created, but he was he was on earth as the only uncreated. The only uncreated. But every person on earth is created. Was created in his day. Only he was not created. His name is Jesus. 
back to sea. You call him hmm, treasure. And I knew him not. But he that but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. I came to let me know him. I didn't know but I was sent to make people know him. I was sent to announce him to people. I was sent to speak of him to people. And John bear, bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him now. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized, baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and I bear record that this is the Son of God. We came from God. This is God. On earth, everybody is the son of someone because he's a natural body. His own is from God, he's not from man. It's not man. Son of God. The Jews understood that to mean equal with God. You understood that. That's why they pick up stones. So why are you stoning me? I, you are a man and you are making yourself God. Is it because I told them I'm son of God? Yes now. <laughs> so meaning you have your origin from God. You don't have your origin from any, any country. From any man. From God, whose dwelling place is from everlasting, whose going forth is from everlasting. How, do, how will you, how special a man to be a friend of such a one? How special a man, especially a woman, that such a one will whisper to you with a smile? It is what all the monies of this life that Jesus will have to smile. Hey. Yes. Again, the next day, John verse 35, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he, he walked, he said, Behold the lamp of God. And the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Jesus. Then John, I mean, then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What secret ye? I've got something. What am I what am I to seek again? That you it's you. They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? I have found a dwelling place for myself. Yes. Dwell in Jesus. Don't, no other place. Dwell in Jesus. Where he is, be there. Where he is. Be there. Root all now me. Where you are, I will be there. Your God shall be my God. The Lord do something to me, and more also, if it is not just death that will separate me from you. Make a vow to Jesus. Make a promise. I will be yours forever. I will serve you forever. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. In verse 39, I mean verse uh, 38. Then Jesus turned and saw them, following and said unto them, What seek ye? What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is 
to say being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. I think maybe if you were the one and you knew who is this, you would have been jumping at <laughs> Because you have received invitation to eternal union with the eternal life. He has called you to come. He has invited you, very willing, to come and see. Come and know where I am. Would you like to say with me? What's a free offer? Come on to me, all ye that labor and I have the Lord of me. I'll be the rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Invitation. What deceived you about my who is telling you that power is somewhere? You're boasting over vanity. Can you tell me the person who has owned that type of power on earth and has lived for 200 years? They died. Can you tell me who has that power the devil promises and has never had sickness, no accident, no nothing? Many die in accident, die by every misfortune. So who is deceiving you? That you have power to undo, to do and undo, and you rejoice? You are rejoicing over vanity. We are rejoicing for eternity. You are rejoicing for all that mundane thing that perish and will not satisfy you. Yes. They came and saw where he dwelt. And abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which had John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah. Everybody was waiting for him. Everybody was looking for him. Eventually, when he came, many didn't know. Eventually, when he came, many didn't know, a few found him. The word find means going about looking for until you see it. They went about looking for and saw it. Many people saw deceit in life and hooked to deceit. They were deceived into a religion. They were deceived into a society. They were deceived into a practice. But this one found the Messiahs. Hey, you have found the original thing. Huh? That is the world. Hallelujah! Amen. Yes! We have found him. And he brought him to Jesus. He brought him to Jesus. We have found the Messiah, which is the which is Christ. And when he brought him to Jesus, Jesus beheld him and said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find it Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethesda, the day I mean, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him. Tell your brothers and sisters, tell to them, call them by form, tell them by every name, and tell them you have found him. Ha! You have discovered the real life. 
you have discovered eternal life. You have discovered rivers of living water. Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Tell the people, You who have found Jesus, Is it not sweet? Is it not wonderful? Is sin not satisfying? Are you not fool with him? Yes. Are you not seeing heaven already? Yes. Tell people you have found him. Thank you. So that's the truth. Say all. Make sure nothing keeps you from him. Wrong ways of getting money. Stop. Completely. Wrong marriages. Disengaged. Completely. Wrong principles of life. Stopped. Completely. Because of found him. Follow him. The two people followed him. The other people followed him. Invite others to him. Andrew brought Peter. Philip brought Nathaniel. Go and evangelize. Go and tell the world. Go and tell the nations of the world. Tell your family members. Go and tell your workers, your colleagues. Tell your children about it. You have found him. Your found Jesus. Preach! Tell the world! You have found him! You have found life, creator himself! Listen to his word. When Mary found him, Mary sat under Jesus' feet to listen to him. Always love to listen to him. He uses various channels. When you discover one, sit down and listen to him. Always come before the assembly of God, of God's children, true assembly. Listen to him. Be attentive. Don't allow sleep. Don't allow wandering mind. Pay full attention. Listen to him. Don't be like a child. I'm going to tell this story about. I'm going to have this story many times. I suppose. A child of about um, seven years, six, seven years, came with the mother to the church where, when I was pastoring. I had a special program and the woman was invited there. I was preaching. And the woman was listening. This child was saying, Mother, the rice you cooked and left and told me that when after we should come to church, after church we will go and eat it. That rice is spoiling. You are, you are here. <laughs> that rice is spoiling at home. <laughs> Let's go for that rice. Come, what is spoiling your house? We are speaking about, we are talking to you about Jesus. You are a cheater today. When will they finish? Eh, when? Oh, you have gone from him. Mary found him and sat under his feet. Hearing him. Hearing him. Hear him. Make time in your church to hear him. Make time in your house to hear him. Make time. Come to the fellowship group where he says, where two or three are gathered, I am there. Come and hear him. Come and hear him. Seek righteousness, peace, and victory through him. 
Hunger for more. Hunger for more. With all the knowing of Moses, it has shown me your glory. With all the knowing, you said I have found favor in your sight. My heart is still hungry. I'm hungry, looking for your fullness. Lord, show me now your glory. Hunger after him. After his righteousness. After his holiness. After his victory. He won victory over the devil. Stand on it. Satan should not have dominion over your life. You have overcome sin in your life. Stand on it. Sin shall not rule in your mortal body. That is what the world is saying. Yeah. Preaching. Preaching. Don't be ashamed of him. America needs Jesus. Your country needs Jesus. Men of all races, the white, the black, the all need Jesus. Listen, every color is good. Everybody say it. When you see a black car, well painted, glorious, and it is great, hey, I love to have that car. It's a black car. Amen? Then a green car was passing, it's a wonderful. Hey, this car got the right thing. I wish I had this green car. Then a white car was passing and said, Wonderful. This is clean. This is the I'm saying every black people of every race, they are wonderfully made. No race is superior to another. They just deceiving themselves. They just deceiving themselves. What has skin to do with eternity? Can it save you from hell? You eat better food than we do? But what makes you different? What do you boast about? You are boasting about vanity. Paul said, I have right to boast in the flesh. If anybody will boast in the flesh, I know. Because I am an Israelite. Israel were boasting that time. Because they were people of the religion. They were the people of God. He said, I am an Israelite. My tribe, I am a Benjamin. A Benjamin. My, um, I am a Hebrew of a Hebrew. Both my father and mother were Hebrews. As concerning the law, a Pharisee. But I, what things were given to my counted west? Let the white man throw away that skin and look for Jesus. That is life. Otherwise, vanity. Everything you see organized in America is passing away. It's like a cloud. The sun shines on it, it fades so far. And that which reads is the real life. The soul in you has no color. That is the world. What matters is Jesus. What matters is Jesus. The color of Jesus assumed was of the society where he came from. The chameleon takes the color of the place he is. Don't say it is the color of the chameleon is green because it shall soon be brown if it changes the place to a brown place. He shall look black when he goes to black environment. If that Jesus were to be born in Africa, he would have been a black man. So should we not be boasting about skin? Don't boast. He is God of all races and tribes. I love him. That's great him. That's great Jesus. Jesus. Jesus name. Amen. Strive to be with him in heaven. 
they came to take people to heaven, make sure you go to my hotel. He said, I'm preparing a place for you. Make sure you go there. That's where I came to help you. To go there. I came to fight Satan in your life. I fought him and I succeeded because I delivered witches and wizards. You have the testimony of one here. It's every day that it has happened to many of you. Many children go to live. Stand to it. You will meet Jesus in heaven. Yeah. Obey him fully. Obey him fully. Now, accessories of Jesus. You have the main product, you have the accessories. They are very important because they help in promoting the use of the main product. So, I'm talking about the man of truth. Man of God with the truth. Find him. It's a treasure. Find him. It's a treasure. There are mountains that nobody had climbed to the top until there was a lead to take you there. There are skyscrapers that nobody would have lived in the last floor except there was a lead to take you there. And this lead that takes there is the man of God with the truth. Find him. Find him. Find him. Yes. The truth, the preacher of truth, the teacher of the word of truth that teaches true doctrine and demonstrate the lie. Go and look for him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. He will take you to Jesus. He will open your eyes on Jesus. How you, he will instruct you how to meet with Jesus. He will teach you how to remain with Jesus. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. The Bible tells us in verse 24. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. What a treasure. To find a man like this. They are not there. Listen. In that time, Baalism had taken over the, the nation of Israel. To the point that Elijah said, I am the only one. Yes, because even the others were hidden in the curve, preserved here and there, and they were not coming to prominence. So if Elijah was the one in prominence, this woman said, You are a man of God with the truth. The true man of God who has the life and the work of God with him. It's a treasure. It's a treasure. Yes. Paul said this in Philippians chapter 3. Verse 17 to 19. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 17 to 19. Brethren, the followers together of me and mark them which walk so as they have asked for an example. Meaning, 
Why did he say so? The many work of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? Who mind earthly things? Paul said, brethren, you have discovered that. That should be a treasure to you. That should be a treasure. You have discovered that. I'm telling you, many work in this life. They are enemies of the gospel. They are enemies of Christ. Many churches have been established in this nation. They don't know God. Many churches are established in your nation. They don't know God. They are established all around with every form of thing. Man of God of every kind. They don't know Jesus. They be blind guards of the blind. They be blind guides of the blind. And when the blind leads the blind, tell me what happened. Tell me what happened only. They fall into the beach. And they shall fall into the beach. There are many assemblies that not one of them shall make it to God. But they think they are serving God. Paul said, when I was persecuting the church, I thought I was doing the right thing. I was just doing the wrong thing, ignorantly in unbelief. Many of them are doing the wrong thing without even knowing. They go to start church. God didn't ask them to start church. They recruit them to be to come and be preaching. The man of God. Moving up on that way, evangelists. They don't know what they're evangelizing about. Who's mouth? Who's stomach? What, what did he say here? He said, For many work of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even with him, that they are the enemies of the gospel of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. <laughs> When they come to church as a church, no. we are going to do sacrifice for God. It is the stomach they are talking about. The stomach is looking for money. That God, that God is stomach. That God is their stomach. That is what the world is saying. Therefore, be careful. Not every minister is a minister. We shall know them by their fruits. Did they produce godliness? Did they bear fruits of eternal life? Can you see holiness in their members? That's the majority. But you have found us reading the choice that you have found us. We are sincere. Paul was describing himself and the team that is with him. Yeah. He was describing himself. He was telling them the people that they have found. They are not liars. In the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse one to verse three, or rather one to five. Therefore, see, we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Maybe we are original. We are not preachers of money. We are not preachers of fame. We are not preachers of anything earthly. 
We are preachers of God. There is no game that we are playing. Maybe since I came yesterday, we would have been in the servant offering today. I would have told you stories from Nigeria, things that didn't happen. I would have told you how this thing happened, how that one happened, because I'm looking for dollar. I'm not looking for dollar. I can be in my country and dollar will go and meet me there. It's not dollar that brought me here. You say, Pastor, you didn't come here for dollar. You came here for my soul. Say it again. You are right. You are right. I want you to go to heaven. I had so little time. I was say, what do I do? Let me do the best I can to see how I can help these people. How you can make it to heaven? Paul said, we don't have games. We don't have tricks. We don't have that. We have renounced them. Although we are still being accused. Although we are still being accused. But he said, if our gospel be hit, it is hit to them that are lost. They cannot understand why we are crying. They cannot understand the language of God. They cannot understand the, the pains of Christ that we do. And when we will speak, they think we are proud. When we speak, the thing we are beside ourselves. Oh, thou art beside thy soul. Much many make it be mad. No, I'm not first that I am not mad. But I speak of the words of truth and soberness. This is what I'm preaching. I know the truth. I know the mind of God. I know the word of God. I know the visions of Christ. And I know the world is in doom. I know the church is in doom. I know the pictures that the church is celebrating. I know they are false. I know it. So I'm speaking. I'm not beside myself. If our gospel be hit, it is hit to them that are lost, in whom the gods of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. I see the doom. I see the hopeless situation humanity is in. I see that even in the church, we have to pray and intercede for others that are in doom. Ah. That's where we were walking according to the power that works in us mightily. That is the matter. Therefore, you have found us. Have I not said unto you, my daughter, green, you have enough here. That's a boa, store root. Have I not instructed my workers to leave some plentifully for you, properly? You will find sufficiency here. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13 to 15, Romans chapter 10, the Bible tells us in verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. In this gospel, whosoever shall know Jesus and call upon him, he shall be saved. But how shall they know Jesus and call upon him who they have not believed? They cannot call upon him because they have not believed. They believe in different ways. They believe in different persons. They believe in different religions. They don't know Jesus. Call upon him. He said, I don't know. He said, God, that I don't know him. I find it difficult to say somebody is in the upstairs. The voice of youth in America. Yes. And they are right. They arrive because how shall they believe in him of whom they have no heart? They have no heart. Nobody has come to tell the youth that God is the creator. Nobody has come to tell them Jesus is the way and show them clearly who is Jesus. He is the Lord of life. He is the self existent one. He is Jehovah. The Creator. When I saw them, they grew up without knowing them. They grew wild. Yes, yes. That is it. And so cannot call upon them. Because why? They are for hard. And it continues. And how shall they believe in him in him of whom they are for hard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear it when there's no preacher? There's no preacher. Nobody is preaching. Nobody is talking about Jesus in the airport. Nobody is talking about Jesus in the marketplaces. Nobody is talking about Jesus on the street. How then do they hear? They are lying. They are lying. And it continues. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Except God sends them. Is there any preacher that comes from God? The dollar has sent many preachers to this country. They preach dollars in the internet. In the midst. They preached dollars. They came because they were called to come and make money. Had currency. So they didn't come for Jesus. But they're preachers. All of us are called by the person who called them. They're preachers. Nonetheless, they're busy there in the televisions. They're busy there in the satellite. What are they doing? Saying things that have no meaning, saying things that have no coherence, saying things that have no saying doctrines that are not the doctrines of righteousness. Why? Did God send them? He that is sent has the word of God. How can they preach without this? Without uh, except the sins? Then is it every preacher you listen to? That tells you to bring bottles of water. That tells you to bring anointing oil. That tells you to eat sun and eat green grass. That tells you to do to be jumping up and down. Lie down and will march on you and you'll be well. Is this every picture that God said? No. There are very few. Rejoice that you found him. And the Lord is saying, tell them. They have found they have found the true preacher. Touch your neighbor and say, We have found the true preacher. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And the devil did all to ensure my faith does not land. I mean, my faith will not land on America, but I am hitting the place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have found him not praying with words, not having the vision of canal thing. You have found him. Listen to him. Commit yourself to him. Practice what he teaches you in Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. Philippians. Chapter 4, I read this now. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. That's the voice of a preacher, and he's a true preacher. He is a true preacher. The voice of the trumpeter. He said those things which you learn from me. I taught you them. You received from me. I gave them to you. You heard. Somebody told you this is what I taught. You see in me as I practice them. Yes. Yeah. Two. And the God of peace and righteousness shall be with you. Don't play with this grace that you found in the preacher. Forget about those people making noise. Forget about them. They are not looking for heaven. If they were, they will rejoice also. They are not. They're not looking for heaven. Yes. And in Second Corinthians chapter 26, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 26. Verse 5. The Bible tells us. Let me read from verse 1. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him a king, made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. And he built Elot and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his father. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. Are you there with me in verse 5? Read it. One, two, go. Yes, and he shall go in the days of Zachariah. Who had understanding in the visions of God? Come, is this scripture? The scripture make provision for the visions of God. Why well, then are they, are they challenging you? You people are praying on revelation. Here was a man that found a man of God to learn from, and this man of God had much knowledge of the visions of God. The Lord made him full appearances to him. The Lord opened his eyes to see so many things. He spoke from what he saw from the Lord, and it blessed the life of the king. He, the king sought God under him. And as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. They are telling you, hey, your preacher is always bringing revelation holiness movement is always bringing revelation see it here see it here the visions of God he has understanding and 
Tonight, this vision was given to you from God. They have not turned us away from the truth. They have not turned us away from the faith. From the faith. They have improved righteousness in us. They have caused us to know the Lord. Ah, they have caused us to be more confident upon the truth. If you follow along, the Lord will prosper your Christian life. The Lord will prosper your Christian ministry. That is it. And therefore, he said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, Paul said there, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. He said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. <laughs> because Paul is telling Timothy here, Listen, all I have taught you, you may not seem to have understanding, but take it by faith, because you know me. I will not tell you lies. You know me. I've told you one is correct, two is correct, three is correct, four is correct, five is correct, six is correct, seven is correct, eight is correct, nine is correct. Take the tenth one. I am a correct man. That is the word. Knowing them, all these teachings were giving you on jewelry, on perfume, on deep the kids. He said, but I don't understand uh, how he's wearing pants. A problem in America, the weather is uh, very serious. You are coming from another church. You hear? You are coming from the church where the preachers, their God is their baby. Not a church where the preacher is from heaven. Sent by God. Believe what we teach you. Don't go into argument. It will not profit you in anything. That is the word. That is the word. The, the Bible says, the truth produces godliness. Go and do the truth. And see whether I speak of myself or I speak of the Father. Yes, search the scripture. Because they desire eternal life. But they are they that testify of me. I have told you the truth, but yet believe not. If you believe not me, believe the doctrine. What well, practice it? You will know that it is the truth. Because you will see holiness in your life. You will see the spirit of holiness giving you assurance. Therefore, tell the gospel of truth. Believe the gospel of truth. Don't doubt it. Yeah. The, finally, the truth is the message of the scripture. The sound doctrines that produce, the sound doctrines that produce godliness and heaven. The sound doctrines that give godliness and heaven. Mm. In Titus chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. The truth produces godliness. For you shall know them by their fruits. You will not see godliness in their lives. You shall know them by their fruits. You will not see godliness in their lives. Check these churches. Who wear trousers or pants, you call them? 
who put on jewelry and look like Jezebel and can naturally can they make it to heaven? A Muslim saw two girls, is it two or three, coming from College of Education in Nigeria. They came to the to the roadside to take a vehicle, a taxi. This Muslim man shouted, Hey, it's too much for you because of the dressing of those godless folks. Don't you fear God? One of them, Mami Water, the daughter of the Queen of the Coast. Answer! Thank God we have chosen to be this way. That is the end. What will the man say again? The end of the matter. Go your own way. But God is God. There is a serpent that does not bite on them, but it bites anyway. Don't match the tail. So when the taxi came, they stopped the taxi and entered the taxi. As they entered the lost track from heaven, bah! she died immediately. This is a real story. When they carried her to the father's house of Belia, it said, not in this house. Somebody contending with the living God, they are bringing him to my house. You want my house to be a curse? You know, my hands are not there. She died on the street, won't bury her anywhere. They've gone far. They've gone far. But the truth will produce Christian living, Christian dressing, Christian character, Christian appearance. Not these ones that are moving and say they came out, they are, their house is in the water with my mystery, demons, demon incarnate. So produces godliness. You are in this church where everybody is demonic there. How will you make it? Did God send you there? Then bring, show us the truth that God sent you there. And you're wasting precious money that would have saved more souls. You are giving them there for the belly of the preacher. Because God is their belly. You are sponsoring their belly. You miss the true gospel, the true pictures that are meant to bring souls to eternal life. You're depositing money in hell. You will go and make your money there. Your money sending people there, is it you that you will not go there? Because the Bible says, Whosoever cometh to you and bringeth not this doctrine, receive him not, neither support him. So you're supporting fake people to give them strength and money to commit more immorality. To defy people's, people's wives more in the name of ministry. The pains. Pains. The truth will produce Christian character. The message of God. Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to verse 10. Yeah, he spoke it very clearly and emphatically. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. There are people that are coming to pervert your faith that the Lord is teaching you in holiness of other movement. I'm telling you, you are receiving the purest gospel in holiness of other movement. Purest! Because it's my movement. And people are pursuing you to remove you from it. A mother that you are accepting it. You are reasoning with them. They are painting 
five things that they have no understanding. They have no complete understanding. They have no verified well. And you try to challenge this gospel. Challenge your preacher. And you want to agree, you will perish with them. Because they don't have the truth that produces godliness. Yes. And Paul said, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, as we said it before. So say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have preached, ye have than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I not persuade men of God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. People, you are going after names of men of God. Who defy altars. Bury human beings in their altars. And they preach and say, hey, Jesus, Jesus. Do you see Jesus in their life? Do you see Jesus in their church? Do you see Jesus in their members? You think Jesus has no order? Jesus has no pattern? Jesus does not reject people? Jesus doesn't have choice? Is it everyone that presents himself that shall be, shall be accepted? Why then did the Lord reject the sons of, uh, of Joseph? Shama was rejected. The Lord had rejected him. Elia was rejected. You think God will not reject preachers, preachers of hell. They will have brought them in the multitude. They carry people to hell. They are into covenants with the devil. To do so, we need them. And we will speak, you say, we are not respecting personality. You know Jesus? I love Jesus more than them. I love Jesus more than them. He will back me up to speak the truth as long as I live. And not teach about enemies help me. That is his promise. Say, I will that another spirit will come upon you. You will be like as I am. And more also, because that's what Paul said. Be as I am, but not in the change that I am having now. That is it. Give yourself fully to the true doctrine and leave it out. In Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 Free your soul with fullness but from the righteousness say charity peace with them that call on the Lord out of it, your heart. With them, you know them. The Lord has shown you them. He has raised up this movement for himself. And made it non-denominational. That everybody can associate with it. And then, finally, in one Timothy concerning the doctrines of truth. In First Timothy chapter four, verse fifteen and sixteen. First Timothy chapter four, verse fifteen and sixteen. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy prophet may appear to all. Take it unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both set thyself and them that hear thee. You have not yet been set until you maintain the, co the, the correct doctrine. All the Christian love you are doing with stolen property. You are not doing the Christian life for heaven. It's not the one. All the Christian that you are doing 
with a, a wrong marriage is not a Christian life for heaven. No, the doctrine, the correct doctrine, correct life. All these lies you are telling, and you say you are a Christian, you are not for heaven. That one is clear. The doctrine, don't forget it. If you forget doctrine, you can't make it to heaven. There is no Christianity without doctrine. No vehicle moves without tire. No vehicle moves without tires on it. That's why the church, the church is standing still. The churches are standing still because there are no tires. They are not teaching the true world. And therefore you cannot see righteousness in them. Doctrines according to godliness. The doctrines that produce godliness, they are in scripture. Go and read them out. Read them. Get our material. Get our books. Go to our website. Go to YouTube and click on our, on, 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 on our name. You will get these messages. You will listen to them. Every one of them. The Lord sent it. The Lord sent it. Be sober. Hold yourself. Follow this path. It is a narrow path. You are crossing a bridge. Therefore, and you are crossing a bridge with some wood crossing it. A narrow. Walk carefully. So walk from earth to heaven. Walk carefully. It's not a highway. It's not a bridge that is in a highway. It's a bridge of, of a narrow path. With some wood laid across from one side to another. You don't run. You may not balance well and you may fall. Walk well. Fall as well. And cross this earth. The grace of the Lord be upon your life. The name of Jesus keep your life. The Lord make you fruitful. Pass this Christianity to others. This is what Jesus established upon the earth. And he said, you have known the truth. The Lord says so. You have found the truth. Walk in it. Let's rise up upon our feet. You have found the truth. Work on it. You have found Jesus. Follow him. You have found the man of the truth. Hear him. You have found the doctrines of truth. Practice them. Yes. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way, I have chosen the right way, the way of holiness. You have chosen the way, you have chosen the way. You are chosen the right way, the way of falling in. Amen. I have the way. Oh, yeah. I have the right way, the way of There is no other way that will lead you to heaven. This is the right way, the way of falling in. And I just in the way. Keep on following this way. There is no other way that would give you heaven. That way of calling it. And I just in the way. Following this way, make God happy with you. 
keep on making him happy by way of holiness. And I just in the way. Make promises and say, I will follow this way till I leave this world, the way of holiness. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Make other stone do declare before all men that you are for this way, the way of holiness. And I trust in the way, trust in the right way, the way of holiness. We shall meet in the one, and I will shake your hand for making in heaven by way of calling you. Chocolate in the way, just in the way of calling you. Congratulations to you, my dear brother. For choosing in this way, the way of pulling me. Ah, yes, just in the way. Ah, maybe the way of pulling me. God bless your sister. God bless your life so much for following this way, the way of pulling me. Oh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Be comfort from an end by stressing this way, the greatest way, the way of holiness. Oh, in the way. When you get to your house, tell them you have made a choice. That choice is pulling me. You must follow this way. I am mm. I am oh my God. Hey! Tell the Lord that He has no power to stop you from walking on this way. The way of holiness. Ha! And I trust in the way, trust in the right way. The way of holiness. God bless you so much. I am happy with you that you are in this way. The way of holiness. And I trust in the way. Just in the right way, the way of holiness. Go before the Lord and dedicate yourself to it. Dedicate yourself to holiness. The way of the Lord. The way of the Lord. Ask Him for grace. Tell Him your promise. You are going to walk before Him and be dark and be perfect. God will help you. Jesus. God will help you. Don't fear. Just make up your mind. You will not do evil anymore. You will not do evil against one another. Against any man. Against any woman. Thank you.
The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I 
I believe you, Lord, cause you are. 